folks, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to the History of the Dice Tower. Today we're going back to the year 2015, oh so long ago. Uh, and 2015 was a really big year for the Dice Tower because everything changed dramatically and it all started at the beginning of the year. See, at the beginning of the year I ran my Kickstarter. This was the third time I'd done a Kickstarter. But at this point, I was starting to feel a little overwhelmed with doing everything for the Kickstarter. Now, don't get me wrong. I had an army of volunteers who helped out do a lot of things. I had a great co-host on Dice Tower, Eric Summer, who helped do a lot of things. But I just was kind of like, well, man, there's so many videos, so much to do here. And I didn't want, I know this is going to sound odd, but I didn't want to be rich off the Dice Tower. I, I felt like, okay, so much money had come in the previous year, and I had used that money for the Dice Tower and you know, help get a bigger area to record it and all that. But I wanted to do more. I, I, I wanted to be able to help other people get involved in the industry. And so I already had a lot of people who were helping out on the channel. One of those people was Z Garcia. And Z had been teaching at the time. He was a drama teacher. Uh, and for whatever reason, budget cuts and all, they weren't able to bring him back on. And so he came to me and said, if you know anyone who's looking for, you know, to hire, let me know. I said, sure. And, and I was thinking, well, that would really work well. Would he want to do it, though, you know? And so I went and talked to him and I said, hey, what do you think? We'll make it a stretch goal of the Dice Tower. And he was very interested in that. And so we did. We had him as a stretch goal and said, the Dice Tower will no longer be a one person thing. We're going to bring on someone else, Z Garcia. And the response to that was extremely positive. And in fact, we made one of our, I thought, one of the funniest videos uh, when Z first came on board when we hit that stretch goal. And overall, the whole it changed the dynamic of the Dice Tower so much. Uh, you know, I used to roll out of bed, start working, go to sleep, you know, just work throughout the day. I worked a lot, but now I started keeping more regular hours. He would work from home a little bit. He'd come over to my house a few days a week, and we really had a good rapport back and forth. Him and I, we, we were on the same page. He helped me out and different things. And slowly but surely, I started rolling him into the Dice Tower in various ways. As it seems every time I bring someone on the Dice Tower, at first I was kind of like, well, you'll do some videos. And the job description was a little hazy, right? But as time went by, it became more and more clear. Clear. Another thing that happened in 2015, and it happened about midpoint of the year, but there was a lot. I was working on a new website. Well, not me. I hired someone with our 2014 Kickstarter funds to make a new website. Eh, that website right now is probably dated, and that's going to be a 2020, spoiler, goal to redo the website again, a five-year uh, later thing. But we had volunteers come, and if you helped, I appreciate it. People come in and help to move over an immense amount of videos. But it was a nice upgrade from what we had before. So meanwhile, we continued going on. We did a gaming, our top 10 gaming experiences video, which is just one of our top 10s, right? But the reception to that was so good that I decided to do top 10 gaming experiences of each year as time went by. In podcast news, we started adding tales of amazement and tales of horror. These were things that I thought, I remember reading one, thought it would be a good idea, and the reaction to that was very high and fun, and so we started adding those. Uh, Eric went and did Total Con again without me, since I had missed it the previous year because of uh, Jimmy being born. I was, you know, I just can't make everything, and I never actually went back to Total Con. They, it wasn't for them lack of inviting me. It just I realized I couldn't make everything, and usually after the Kickstarter, I was pretty drained running that thing. Uh, we also did, I was said, okay, what else can we do besides reviews? We did a couple videos of board game terms, and <clears throat> we started doing some live plays of games. Again, I kept having this vision of we can do live things. Live was hard. It still was hard in 2015. It's still a pain in the neck. Still problems with the internet, but we were able to pull this off better and better. Z started a show. One of the things I was like trying to figure out something for him to do. I said, "Why don't you do a antithesis show, a board game breakfast? You know, something where we can almost even have a war between our two different uh, groups." And so he started something called Board Game Blender. Uh, on the audio podcast of things, I was. We have been doing an enhanced podcast. So. 
Enhanced podcast is now in 2019. It's a thing of the past. But at the time, you could listen to a podcast. You could record enhanced podcast where you look at it and you could see pictures about the thing you were talking about. And you could click like next and jump around in a podcast. It was great. It was a ton of work to put those together. And over 2015, we phased those out because A, ton of work. B, not a lot of downloads. And C, Apple stopped supporting them. But they were fun while they lasted. Now, this year, 2015, was a year where we decided to have a major presence at the Gamma Trade Show. I had sent Dan and Eric in 2014, and it was kind of a mess. Not on their fault. They did a great job. But just uh, running back and forth and doing interviews and things. In 2015, I worked with Gamma, got a room, we set up, and we tried to stream live from the show itself. This had been something that John Ward, the president of Gamma at the time, was saying, you know, we need to do this. I said, it's going to be a pain to do. And it was a pain to do, but it went off really well. We got a really good feedback. We kind of made, we tried to make a big production of it. It was, uh, there was, you know, there was a lot going on, but it really went well. And at this point in time, we were also happy because we won the Board Game Geek Game of a Podcast of the Year. So that's kind of a, it's a very weird award, really, because once you win it, you can't win it again. So, uh, you know, each year there's fewer and fewer podcasts, but it's always a neat thing to win in 2015. We also did the People's Choice Top 100. This was something I wanted to do. I've been doing for a long time, you know, letting people vote on their top 10s. I always want to hear other people, you know, the one thing about Dice Tower is I never want it to be just my voice, only the games I'm interested in and the games I'm not interested in. And I've always been a big believer that just because I don't like a game, someone else might, and then that person can talk about it and be enthusiastic. Certainly there's games we all love and there's certainly games we all hate. But very few games fall in those categories. Most games are somewhere in between. And the People's Choice Top 100, we found to be an interesting way to do that. And I believe somewhere along the line, this is where Z got Voice of the People <laughs> as his tagline. The Dice Tower Essentials, uh, I had mentioned Sheriff of Nottingham, which had started in 2014. We started adding more games to the line. Uh, Royals, Onitama. City of Gears, which actually never came about. Uh, Royals did okay. There had been too many Royals had been sold in Europe for it to do as well. I still think it's a great game. You should try it out. But Onitama surprised us. I remember very specifically, me and Z sat down and played this two-player abstract game, Onitama from Japan, and we were both like, this is amazing. This is unbelievable. And I'm really glad that one was redone and surprisingly enough has sold incredibly well. Abstract games don't do very well. Onitama has done very well as time went by. We recorded episode 400 that year, which is 202 episodes ago as of me doing this. So that's kind of an interesting, uh, was an interesting thing. We're like, wow, episode 400, will we ever get to 1,000? Well, I still wonder that. Uh, 2015 was also the first year I went to the Gathering of Friends, which coincidentally is where I'm at when you're watching this. The Gathering of Friends was a small convention that Alan Moon had started uh, 30 years ago, actually, and he just invited his friends to come and then invited other people to come. And so he had invited me probably a decade before this, actually. But when I lived in Korea, I just couldn't make it. When I was a teacher, I couldn't make it. Now that I was full time, I had the opportunity to go. And so I said, yes, of course, I love to go to this. And it was a blast to go. Now, The Gathering of Friends is interesting because for many years, it was the only place where you could go and just like game, you know, or one of the very few places. Now, there's no reason to ever feel like sad you can't go. There are hundreds of these conventions all across America. We run one ourselves, Dice Tower Retreat, you want a game. Uh, but still going to this was neat because we were able to just go in there and game and talk to a lot of designers and make contacts for the future. I did notice when I was going back and looking at 2015 that at this point we were only uploading our videos in 720 quality. Now there was a reason for that. One was our internet connection. We just To upload in 1080 takes double the time to upload. But somewhere along the line, I want to say near the end of 2015, AT&T showed up my door and like, hey, we got fiber. Do you want it? I was like, yes, please. And so we were able to go up to 1080. And some people noticed that. Although, incidentally, as the years go by, it seems like people are watching us on smaller and smaller screens. And we have very rarely had anyone like ask for 4K. I'm still not convinced it's necessary. Also, it's a huge amount of storage space. But we did over the year 2015, at some point, I can't figure out exactly where it was, make the switch and start uploading our stuff in 1080. I also lost a tooth. You might notice that there's a tooth missing. I lost a tooth and couldn't afford to get one replaced in it. And I thought, ah, eh, it's not that big of a deal. But 
this was the point where I was really glad Z was on board because me being out of the picture with a tooth, you know, with a toothache and stuff, I couldn't do anything really. I mean, it drove the, well, the pain was excruciating, but Z was able to be there and help cover for me. And I love that idea that if I was out, the Dice Tower didn't stop. And in fact, this year at Origins itself was a big, huge deal for me. When I went to Origins in 2015, I got dreadfully sick. I, my wife was sick, I kissed her goodbye, went to Origins and got really sick. And to the point where I couldn't go and do all these interviews and, and all the, the live streaming that we were planning to do there. We were planning to run stuff from Origins and do all kinds of stuff and record videos there. And we, I just couldn't, I, I couldn't do it. And the whole team, uh, they, just, they just came and they did a fantastic job. Um, uh, Sam came and helped and Matt Hosey and then of course Z and Eric were there and they just ran so smoothly without me and that was a big deal to see these guys do it and not need me to be there was fantastic that's kind of my, the end goal of this so that and someday you know I will say the Dice Tower no longer has Tom Vassell and everyone else will still keep going so we did the Origins coverage. This was something that we had been expanding on year and year. And in 2015, this became a huge deal, our Origins coverage. We also went to Dice Tower Con, and I started more of this live stuff, trying to stream stuff from Dice Tower Con. If you go look at the Dice Tower Con from 2015, <clears throat> was not the best of quality, but it was something that we were trying to do and even trying to get some audience participation, not from the folks there, but from the people on the internet. Now, in as time has gone by, I have put more of an emphasis on the people actually at the convention. I feel like they're the ones who came. They should have the first priority when it comes, like I'll take questions from them, not necessarily from the streaming, but the streaming was a nice addendum. We hit 100,000 subscribers in 2015. Got a little plaque from YouTube. Just showed up one day and I was like, wow, that's really cool. Um, I, I get my next plaque at a million subscribers and I think I'm gonna do that in 2030 maybe? <laughs> it's a long time. But it was still a really neat thing. Uh, for Board Game Breakfast, it was a zooming along, of course. Uh, at this point, no one was asking me to shut the show down. Contributors coming in and out. One of the things that we did this year that was a lot of fun is that Hollywood, whenever I do Dice Tower Productions, Hollywood would come behind me and dance with a mask. Someone had contacted me from a company that makes masks. They were going to do some board game masks. And they wanted to know if I wanted to be involved with that. And I said, I would love that. And it was a shtick that we did for maybe a couple years. I don't think I could get Holly to do that now. But she did enjoy it while we did it. Steve Avery, my uh, co-designer for Nothing Personal, uh, kept bugging me to start a cruise to the point where even putting on the internet, hey, do you want to you run a cruise? You know, and some people seemed interested, and I was like, I don't think a board game cruise would really work. But the idea got put in my mind. But I didn't look at it seriously, at least not in 2015. 2015 is also the year I came up with Vassal's Law. This was just something on a podcast where someone said, what's your law? And I was like, ah. So I made something up, but then I kind of refined it to the point where Vassal's Law, very briefly, where I said, uh, if a game is truly great, it will be reprinted. Of course, that's an extremely modifiable thing, right? There's games that people say are great but haven't been reprinted. There's games that have intellectual properties that can't be reprinted. However, I feel that it is a very mostly true statement and uh, you can go back and look at the threads when I did this and people said well we have all these games and almost all the games people have mentioned have since been reprinted. Samuel Healy came on board at this point when Sam heard that Z came on I didn't even ask Sam because Sam had a job and Sam was teaching at the time so it didn't occur to me that he would want to come too but he did want to be involved then so we'd wait till this teaching year finished in the summer uh, Sam came on board and we're like, all right, now there's three of us. Can we make this work? Uh, well, it was a little close uh, on the financial level to have three people on the pod, on, you know, on the payroll, but we were able to pull it off and uh, having three people again made things a little easier to move back and forth. Some of the things that we did that were very notable in 2015, we did a live playthrough. Well, we recorded playthroughs and then posted them of Pandemic Legacy. This was a big deal for us. First of all, it was a big break that we got the game early. We were able to go through and play through it live. It was a lot of fun, and a lot of people really enjoyed us going through that. Um, we also, uh, I think 2015 was where I started wearing hats in my videos. I don't think that's a big deal, but the hats became associated with me. I always have worn hats all the time outside the house. I love wearing hats. 
I just didn't normally wear them on videos, but for some reason I started doing it and it became a thing. Um, and it's not like I made it up for the videos, I just happened to wear them during the videos themselves. Now we had some of our contributors who were very involved with Dice Tower leave the Dice Tower in 2015. Dan King and Bart, uh, the chief, both went and started their own channels. These were very amicable. They both wanted to go and start their own things. And I don't want to hold people back. I couldn't afford to hire them, you know, to bring them onto the, the Dice Tower full time. So they went and did their own things. Dan still, well, they both have their channels, both still doing all kinds of things. And I've always been a little proud of this sort of thing. Like someone comes on the Dice Tower, makes a name for themselves, go out and start their own channel. That's just a cool thing, and I'm glad that that was able to happen. Essen, this was the second year that we had gone to Essen and had a presence. We had a little booth at this Essen. Sam wasn't able to make this one, uh, but me and Z were at Essen, and there was a lot of stuff going on, and it was a lot of fun, but it was a lot of work. We also did the first and only live board game breakfast at Board Game Geek. Again, it wasn't stream live, but we did it live in front of people and had different contributors come up, and that was fun. Uh, we did a playthrough of Time Stories, just like we had done Pandemic Legacy. And in 2015, I started a new video series called Week in Review, where I would go back over the previous week and say, here's all the reviews I did, and here's what I think of those games. This is something that I still think a lot of people like, because you can go through and see you know, real quick thoughts on the different games, and then go watch the full review. And I think... 2015 was the first year I did a blooper reel at the end of the year. I had some funny things happened, and so I saved those. Uh, we've done a lot of blooper reels since 2015. I think 2015 is my favorite blooper reel because you see Sam hit Z by accident in it, and that was just a funny thing. So that's 2015. It was a big year because Dice Tower went from one and a half people, me and Eric part-time, to three and a half people. And it didn't stop in 2015. But that's a story for the next episode. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Basil, and this has been the History of the Dice Tower. <laughs>